<laughs> okay, so we start. Uh, we'll just go back few slides. Uh, we were talking uh, yesterday. Start with some contrast and then went over. But there are few things which I forgot to mention. Uh, we, we did say that for PPR or NPR, the fraction of resist after exposure. Uh, it may start at an initial dose of T0 and may end up in DF when all of PPR is exposed or start from D0 to start exposing and finish at DF and we define a term gamma which is called the contrast factor and we said it is 1 upon log of this. However, one fact which I forgot to tell, uh, it seems as if DF and D0s are constant for a resist it is not really and that is why I thought I should rewrite. I wrote this lines afterwards after I saw in the book. Uh, gamma is really not a constant even for a resist. It varies with process parameters like chemistry involved, baking times, baking temperatures, before and after exposures, underlying layers and wavelengths. So, it can it is not that for a given resist DF by DF D0 ratio is fixed. Okay, it can vary with so many of them and we are expecting gamma to be higher enough such that the uh, required DF values are not very high and still it is able to expose all the resist. Okay. Uh, this is what yesterday I, these lines I wrote yesterday and I thought I should show you. Okay. Uh, there is also a uh, interesting feature which is related to contrast. Uh, which we will see now. I keep repeating my problem is essentially the sufficient intensity of light should get inside and get inside as early as possible so that full resist is exposed okay. and the amount of dose required to do this should be smaller. That is what I am really looking for in lithography. How good I do it is what my expertise. Okay, so is, this is of course as I say I read yesterday uh, the book again and I realized that these are issues which you should know that gamma is not really a constant. Okay. Though to a great extent uh, for a given all these parameters gamma will be a constant. Is that clear? So if your time lithography is fixed, so okay gamma will be fixed but otherwise gamma is a function. So if I change the pre bake temperature or post bake as we shall see this gamma may vary. Okay. So, there is a possibility of improving gamma by this is what I wanted to stress. So, it is not just that I chose one kind of resist and I am through, I cannot then help. Okay. So, I have a pos possibility of playing with gamma values as well. Is that uh, point clear to you? So, why suddenly I said 5 to 10? So, you may ask, so if this is fixed, what is 5 to 10? Yes, I can do some mischief and uh, I can get little higher gammas if I need okay. so that I have better resolution or better contrast. This is something which last uh, I forgot. This of course we did but what we did not show, uh, I think that slide was double, it just got mixed up there so that slide was there. Uh, uh, this slide was showing that there is a mask, uh, good mask, I have put it on a resist and uh, depends on the exposure dose and position, position is along x axis from here to here. Uh, I figure it out that depending on the thickness of resist the all other parameters, uh, this upper portion you know you can see this of course the other portion is not shown here, this is the second uh, metal line or second mask area. So, let us say if this is your uh, corresponding to this, this is your aerial image pattern for a given exposure and this is your DF D0, this is D0, this is DF okay. And if you have a another uh, area of which is under mask and it is so that the aerial image has a lower intensity and this can happen because of thickness of resist not being constant. In that case one can see it may be little flattening up. And this hatched areas are essentially called partially exposed resist areas. Okay. You are going from D0 to DF or D0, DF to D0 or this. In one case you can see the partially exposed areas are larger. Ideally it should be 0. I want sharp this 
that may not happen, I may have some gray areas as shown here and this happens reality, why? Because on the wafer the thickness of resist is not uniform throughout the wafer, okay. So there is a possibility that you may actually get gamma differently at different positions because DFD0 to shaded areas may be different at different points, okay. And this means some contrast will be lost even if uh, you have everything good but there is a possibility the mask may not be the culprit, the culprit may be the resist thickness, okay. But these are the all issues because at the end of the day I cannot blame anyone. If it does not work, uh, someone else will blame me. So obviously I must a priori know what could I could, could be done so that this is minimized, is that clear? Please remember every time I am looking for a smaller dose, however at the same time I want full exposure to the resist thickness, is that clear? So of course there are tricks and trade of uh, how to get rid of even if I make a mistake I can slightly correct it and that can be shown little later, okay. Uh, we already looked into the drawbacks of uh, yesterday this was shown and also we showed the actual alignment system, okay. And these are some of the, so now we finally show you the actual lithography sequence. Yesterday we did show you a diode being made but here is exact process which is given in a book, given in many journal papers and it is available everywhere wherever you wish and maybe if I see this lady wearing INUP so must have heard in INUP n times, okay. The lithography process. Uh, I now uh, create a some kind of sequence of processes which leads to a good lithography, okay. Uh, the first thing in the uh, process of doing a lithography is cleaning the wafer, it is most important. There must be some oxide or some other material which you want to, in which you want to create windows but the surface of whatever you have has to be very good clean, okay. So you may actually go through a RCA clean and dry it very heavily. This drying process is also very, very important, okay. Because this is called surface preparation prior to coating of the uh, resist. If there is a moisture, resist may actually crumble or sometimes does not stick, okay. So because of that, the drying process is very crucial, okay. Uh, normally run in a little higher temperature ovens and oven is running with a huge amount of nitrogen flow inside. Typical flow in a normal ovens is around few liters per minute, but we need roughly at least 30 liters per minute flow inside the oven chambers so that there is no oxidation of wafers and there is no dust going on it, okay. Once the wafer, sometimes even the furnace itself we may put and take it out, when, but if there is a metal, do not put it into furnace. If it is oxide, nitride, or anything, yes, you can push after for drying itself in the heated furnace at the edge and nitrogen is anyway passing in that. So you can put it there for a while and then take it for uh, masking, okay. Then we apply a, a what is called as primer, uh, primer is a sticking material. Uh, I hope many of you have heard about this in some home, many of, I do not know many of you have seen how the pens are put on the walls or any furniture, they always coat with a primer, okay. The primer is essentially is the creator of a bond between the resist and the layer which you want to like SiO2 or nitride. So if I put some primer layer, it will allow resist to stick and it will also allow SiO2 to stick with the primer. So of course a mono layer is put, so it is also applied by putting into a chuck and rotating it, okay, or spinning it. The primer generally used is hexamethyl disilane, HDMS, very famously known HDMS and layer typically reaction, the kind of thing which I am looking for, this is SiO2, this is photoresist and there is a primer in between which bonds, okay. Now this primer application is only for resist adhesion because otherwise resist will roll, really you have you not seen it but resist film is coated and after a while it actually rolls, okay. So everything what you did ha is lost halfway, okay. So we normally wish to see that it sticks well, okay. 
then of course we after the primer we coat the wafer with resist and normally there is a different dispensations. Uh, earlier we used to put through a syringe sub drops, now there are a formal diffusing dispensers which actually put sufficient small drops around all the wafers and uh, there is a chuck which is rotating bowl and the dispenser is on the top. So, few fixed amount of resist is dispensed on the wafer and then we give it a spin which may be of the order of 3000 to 8000 rotations per minute. No, 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 no. At, when you go to remove the resist primer will go actually. Then RCA, no you will have every time you will go for a cleaning so that everything will get cleaned up. In RCA everything there are HCL and H2SO4 everything will be coming out. Every process the wafer should be fresh. So, last process you finish you go to cleaning then you will actually remove everything. When you strip your resist you will strip everything. So, uh, of course, this depending on the viscosity of the resist used and the thickness you are trying to build. Uh, this thickness is decided by feature sizes and thickness is also decided by viscosity and as well as the kind of source you are going to use expose okay. and kind of lithography three of them will show you. So, this laser uh, resist layer could be Please remember why the resist layer is important because resist when even if it is hardened somewhere uh, by expo after exposure it should not get etched out when the other part which is non resist soft part is being aged that resist should not actually itself come out ok. So, it should stop agents actually attacking the surface below. So, you need to have sometime thicker resist so that it does not attack layers below but to a thick uh, too thick a resist actually rolls, it does not remain enough sticking coefficient for it, so it rolls. So, one has to worry how much thickness for a given kind of films uh, by experience. Okay. Typical thickness could be 3000 Armstrong to a 10,000 Armstrong. Uh, then the most important step in the case of resist after before the exposure is given is pre bake. This is very, very important because of many things are happening one is of course that since the resist has a solvent and we want a film which has solvent free okay, only resist part. So, I, I want to remove that solvent. So, I heat the wafers or either give what called pre baking and uh, pre in the sense pre to the exposure. Okay. So, I actually bake it around 90 degree to 100 degree around for 10 10 to 30 minutes depending on the resist and depending on the thicknesses you have deposited this time may vary. Uh, the first advantage is it removes solvents and it also has an advantage of releasing stress any thermal this is called anneals and it releases stress in the material ok. So, it is stress release so the film is more uniform it does not crumble so it needs to have some pre bake. Now, I'll, uh, just think of it I just put a question mark what if I do it at 120 or what if I do at 60 degree what if I do at higher times and what if I do at lower times possible four combinations why do I choose some combination which suits me ok. Think of it one example I can give you if I actually bake at higher temperatures the upper surface will get hardened faster ok because it will dry faster but lower one will not. So, there will be some kind of a gel below the hard surface which will not get exposed ok. So, they one example I give you now think of it similar things four possible combinations higher temperature higher times higher temperature lower times lower time low temperature higher and lower time. Think of it why only some selective combinations work because there is a possibility of resist not getting properly exposed ok. So, I one I answered the other three you look for it okay. think of it there is nothing great and why I am leaving it maybe I can ask then ok. So, of course these are all experiences uh, you do have many and you realize are not happening well. So, think over it why it has happened then you create some solution for yourself and then you find how it works. 
So this is not something which is very popularly given in books but these are something experience, we know uh, how much I do. So for example these temperatures are also not very sacrosanct for all resist, okay some may do at 85 but some other time, some may do at 95 some other time. So there is a combination but there is a maximum min bars which you have to follow in either case. The next step of course is the alignment which is the most important part the pre baked wafer is the, then put on a chuck which is the mask aligner chuck yesterday I showed you and over which the mask plate is actually sitting okay. and there is a gap between the mask plate and the wafer. There is a gap between this may be 50 microns or even lower but they are not touching, is that point clear? They are not touching, okay. What is the, why they are not touching? Because when I move one of them related to each other, they should not uh, scratch each other. So there is a gap between them so that I can move wafer with reference to mask or mask with reference for alignment of patterns. Now many a times there are alignment patterns we create and these are created by designers, they have, they have been told to do this which I will show you quickly, just a minute I will come back to that. What we do is there are alignment marks, the first alignment mark may be something like this. This is blown up version, not necessarily that big. This is put on four corners sometimes in the edges of this. This is one pattern we create. Sometimes the pattern could be like this. Sometimes the pattern could be pattern could be like this. These are called alignment marks. Okay, so these are for what is called as global aligning. Since each mask corners will have these some kind of alignment marks, and in the last mask they will be similar. This. So if I am uh, for the second mask. It must be either if you want to cover it, it should be either this or it may be for depends on what being etched and what being retained, the other pattern may be inside or outside depends on whether you are covering something or you are etching something. So the next alignment mark on the second mask will be correspondingly same position either slightly lower or slightly higher depending on what patterning you are doing. And these alignment marks are created by designers during their layouts. So they provide you everywhere this because layout I am not creating. Layout must come from design side. So these are the patterns which they create and these are major corners or some, sometimes in the edge, side edges as well. So when I align, the first time I align is these alignment marks which is called course alignment. I do not see patterns, I only see these two corners and four corners or six corners, six areas I align. So major wafer may get aligned actually. But the problem is if you have a wafer, let us say like this, sorry, your mask may be like this, this area still may not get aligned. You may have on some chips you saw the alignment went and some area may not be. So you have one has to guarantee that full wafer corners. So not only on chip you align but also you align on edges of the wafer, okay, those chips. So that roughly you know your mask and your wafer which has earlier some prints is actually now just below that. Okay. This can be done by X, Y uh, column in this uh, stage or it can also be done optically by uh, mirrors but that we should see later. Now this alignment once done then individual wafers some X and some Y's are actually chosen and their finer alignments are done from corner to corner. Okay. We believe that if two diagonals are matching then most of the time wafer will match. Okay. If the diagonals match so the wafer must have got aligned. Now the problem starts in most cases the kind of lithography I do is called contact printing. I have after this alignment is done which may be 25 micron mask away, I bring it down and allow the mask to touch to the wafer. The emulsion portion is below that means there is no gap between the mask and the 
initial pattern between the resist okay. Now there is a problem there itself because in any XYZ system it is mechanical there is always backlashes okay uh, or there is a what is called a inertial motions. So if I have if I have a wafer and I am putting this on the top of it I thought it is I will go like this but actually I may go like this I may go like this okay. So there is a error and in general this error is many a time systematic errors unless you every time change the direction of x and y this you know roughly which side it goes okay. So a priori your initial misalignment itself is to be such that when I stick it will get aligned. If it does not you come back again realign keep doing after a while you realize how to align okay. It takes months sometimes years to learn exact alignments for a smaller patterns. Every time you do you scratch something you go out of it some chips get aligned some chips do not but that is only experience and you know how to align large number of chips in one wafer and number of such wafers okay. and therefore these are tricks which as I say I cannot just say do it try it yourself and learn it okay. So this is called alignment typically the ultraviolet light uh, source energy or source uh, intensity is 150 millijoules per centimeters for DNQs and 20 to 40 millijoules per centimeter square for DUVs. So this then we expose once we align we expose so wherever dark portions are there on the mask uh, light will not pass through wherever clear portions are light will pass through depending on the resist either it will get hardened clear areas or it will become softened if it is PPR it is softens if it is NPR it is hardened okay. So this is important step this is essentially what the major step is in all the business how to put patterns and this how many times I may have to do in a diode 4 times and for a CMOS it may be as I say 16 to 24 masks or even higher ISO CMOS process may require 32 masks and current uh, uh, Intel processor is requiring 38 masks. So it is some kind of FinFET based uh, extreme controls side walls so many things we are trying there so it requires 36 mask or 38 mask. Uh, if you have wireless chip you may have further 4 mask because of the lengths you have to adjust for the RF lines. So you have even 40 mask process for a wireless receiver chip or uh, using as even standard Intel process okay. So these are all uh, you must understand and every masking state will create some error is that clear so the next masking should take care of that error itself otherwise error may start building and finally it may not get aligned anywhere is that clear so there is a trick of so please remember this the way we do it is something like this to avoid some errors first time I create some patterns next time these two may be aligned and I may create the new pattern on the next mask and to this when the fourth mask comes I will align first with them and then align with the earlier ones. So I keep creating a new pattern and old ones I keep aligning and that is how I can minimize my errors if possible okay. And that is the trick which and so therefore you must remember every mask where to create the new pattern and where to keep the old patterns match okay. So this is also this is called test area designs and uh, uh, sorry frame designs and frame designs are very crucial at the end in chips okay. Designer may look into only circuit layout but if this is not there things may never work for him okay. So some experience of knowing technology problems is essential for designers. Of course uh, which you are anyway experts uh, the game in internet circuit is something like this wo if this works so it works copy it kisi aur ka kaam kiya hai mera bhi karega aisa kaisa hai copy karo okay that's what all of us wish to do it but uh, sometimes you have to do novelty as well okay after the exposure is done the resist has to be please remember you are shining light and your assumption was that the light did not pass through the dark regions 
yeah it may not pass through dark regions that is true ok. But uh, if this is your window let us say you thought light did not go I mean did not pass through this but light can pass through edges this is diffractions ok and this is major worry in our case ok. So, the actual pattern to pattern which you are doing are not necessarily same this is isotropic it is a diffraction area and we will see that that is how the different alignment system do how to minimize diffraction problems ok. So, please remember that masking is not a very trivial issue it is a very important issue and the proof that your masking was good at the end chip works and if it does not work there is some way your masking has a problem or maybe patterns created by circuit people may be a problem. Okay. Now uh, the purpose of uh, this post exposure uh, bake is typically this is also around 90 degree to 100 degree sometimes 120 degrees uh, depending on the kind of resist you have. If it is DUV uh, then uh, it is this uh, yesterday say the acid generator photo acid generator it reacts with polymer because you have released you have just bonded it it reacted and polymer but it has to come back. So, this catalytic reaction can now take place during this post bake system. So, acid is released again. Uh, it also allows you to some kind of reducing the standing wave patterns because the reflections are because the density of resist becomes higher. So, reflections are minimal relatively smaller and therefore, one says that post bake reduces standing waves and post bake also reduces release acids. Okay. This is very important step if if this is not properly baked when you develop resist from everywhere resist will go away ok. So, this post bake for 30 minutes 100 to 120 degree some may require one some resist require 150 degree hard bakes ok. So, it depends uh, different uh, resist people. Then after resist uh, post bake is given we actually put the wafers either by spray development there is a gun which sprays the developer or in earlier time we used to actually dip, in, dip the wafer itself in the bath. So, you have number of racks uh, wafers on a rack and there is a bath you just dip there ok either way but nowadays it is mostly spray, spray developments. Uh, it takes roughly 30 to 60 seconds uh, at room temperature uh, for resist to develop. What do you mean by resist to develop? The soft portions of resist is solved, dissolved ok and hard portion is not attacked. So, here is again if I do too long what can happen? I will just show you I will come back to it. This is my resist area which is hard ok this is my soft. So, this was getting, getting etched or developed, but part of the developer can get inside and actually lift the hardened resist ok. So, it is too long development can also actually pull uh, the actually hardened resist areas and therefore, the 30 second is not that uh, we figured out it is enough that the hard portion remains there itself. Otherwise from below something like this the developer goes through below and it just takes away. So, in the plane wafer will come there is no resist anywhere ok. So, this tricks of time and temperature is very crucial and thickness how much you have put that decides the time and temperatures. Normally room temperature is good enough and therefore, the lifts process is smaller if it is higher temperature it will lift definitely ok. This, it, this technique has been used in what we call shadow uh, lithography, but some other day ok. Lift something going wrong I used it for my advantage ok. Uh, then I rinse uh, because there is a particles of resist sitting in the clear areas. So, I want to remove all because that is the clear area where la everything has to be etched later. So, I want to remove any resist particles sitting on the portion from where resist has been taken away or developed out. So, this has to be rinsed and also there is uh, many a times it is not necessarily only in water. 
uh, there are fixers like in the case of photography we used to put fixing in hypo. What is hypo? Have you heard of the word hypo? You are right, but why it was called hypo? No, 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 no. Because initially when it was people thought it is sodium hyposulfite. So it was given a name hypo, but later on we figured out it is the thiosulfide. The H uh, is it's more acidic actually. So then they figured out it's not hypo. Okay, but it, that name stuck. Okay. So history hai. Today photography suno padho kabi time mile to. So anyway, you uh, this and then after the PR resist particles are removed, you clean it and then you develop the areas, spin dry it completely. Then actually you post baking because I just now said there is a possibility of edges slightly getting lifted okay so you want to stick them back okay so that actual etching of oxide or nitride during that time HF may go in actually HF is a very strong agent and it will just gets in okay it's as soon as it sees SiO2 below it will just walk in okay so there the age has to be very strict the age is very important than the rest if you see here the resist may actually enter faster here okay because there is oxide below here you only want this oxide to go but actually it will lift this okay. so all that pattern which you are trying will go away okay. after development resist because you are in a solution which is sol dissolving resist so it may also attack the age part easily but age has the maximum uh, what we call stress areas so the resist can penetrate in the particles there. Okay. So there we must harden it again so that resist is not that strong agent there because they hardened resist. But HF or any other agent for the, the other surface may actually enter okay. because this it not only removes this SiO2 it will also remove side, sideways also. So uh, you are creating windows in nothing because there is no oxide anywhere. Okay. So you find there is no pattern. Nee, then stripping will be a problem, nothing great have otherwise happens. So it is typically the bakes are given for 10 to 30 minutes, 100 to 150 degrees centigrade. Here also the uglier version also I have put a question mark. If you rinse it for too long or if you rinse for very short time, what happens? Okay. These are all issues you answer. Okay. So after the photoresist is hardened from the edges once again, then you etch put this wafers into etching solution for the layer which you want to etch like SiO2, nitride, metal whatever you are below which is you are patterning that region should be now that agent should be put in the material. So for example uh, nitride uh, essentially goes uh, normally not in the uh, normal HF but you have to need sodium uh, not sodium ammonium fluoride mixed with HF probably can etch with some one drop of nitric acid probably can etch uh, nitrides. So there are different agents for different materials at different concentrations. So one has to look at it which is relatively strong but not very strong okay. that is the way. Okay. So once the etching of area is a desired which can be oxide, nitride, poly, metal whatever it is and that area is then etched out. And once you put everything in this all it has become messy so you must rinse and clean the wafer once again is that madam clear every time you go you rinse the wafer completely again go through RCA clean okay. But before going to RCA right now you only rinse in water or xylene many times you this and then remove the resist. How to remove the resist? We already said some TMH, TMH at higher temperature itself can act like a stripper. The best stripper is nitric acid. What is the nitric acid we do? There is something called fuming nitric acid. What is fuming nitric acid? Anyone? Anyone heard of this chemistry? Fuming nitric acid. Fuming, so if you take a, if you have seen the nitric acid, it constantly brown vapors keep coming. So why all others are not called fuming and some this, so if there is a copious fumes coming they can only occur if the concentration of HN uh, nitric acid is 48% which is maximum possible. So if it is 
one n solution then the fumes coming from nitric which is the most concentrated nitric acid normally we 10 percent we use nitric acid thin I mean this uh, diluted by 10 percent 10 times water but here we use 100 percent nitric acid which is actually 48 percent which is called maximum possible nitric acid concentration you actually keep your wafers on the wafers itself that it keeps fumes. So, wafers are held in the fumes, resistors attack very fast. However, many people do not like acids, so they have some organics uh, which are called soapies, snoopies, okay. they also are alkaline materials and they also can strip the resist. Okay. So, some uh, acetone can be used for a PPR also. Okay. So, once so earlier I during the etching of SiO2 nitride or any other I did not want resist to be removed I want that to stick because area wise I was etching. But once I am over I want resist to go away because resist is a carbon which I do not want to be around ok. So, I must remove all of it as much as possible and then give full RCA clean to the wafer except if it is metal do not go through acids ok because metal will also go. But otherwise for oxides and nitride go through full RCA clean once again and wafers are ready for next process, next diffusion, next implant, next whatever you are doing you do that and come back for the next lithography. Keep this keeps doing every time you do a process selective and lithography do process keep doing till all of the masks are consumed and the circuit is completely available on silicon that is what lithography is all about. Okay, so we have now seen the procedure of doing actual lithography. Yesterday I showed you diode, also I can show you for mass as well. And one of why I am doing it because at the end I am at least the plumber's 16 mask standard CMOS process I want to explain you later. So there at time you should not ask, I will only say lithography done, okay. Do not say how, I mean, abhi how dikha diya. okay. So that is why I keep saying this you learn because there we will only use all the processes which we learn we know how they are done what is the physics behind what is the chemistry behind and once I know what is happening then I will say okay do this do this do this use this mask only I will show you mask use this mask I get this pattern if I, I H and this I will get this 16 times I go through such lithography and I realize standard CMOS okay that is what their 16 mass processes. So, if I do FinFed it may be 26, 24, 26 masks. Uh, if you only double gate it may require some 21 or 22 masks. So, different kind of structures if surround FinFeds if you are working it may be 30 odd masks. So, there are structures which are different and require different maskings. Now we come to so far we looked into resist and we looked into mass design. Now we look into the exposure systems. There are three exposure possibilities. One, of course, is very pop. Just now I showed, told you all the time was contact printing. Essentially, contact printing means the this is my optical system which focuses the source, which is a point source shown here, ultraviolet source, and uh, this comes in, in this such an angle such that this becomes parallel. The distance is adjusted so that if this is kept at the focal point it, the beams comes out in parallel. So, I put it into parallel beams are coming parallel to the uh, direction and they pass through mask patterns the light passes through mass patterns and then attacks resist. What is the difference between other things this here the mask and wafers are touching contact this is contact printing this is like photography in photography so called negatives are actually connect touched with a uh, photo paper and actually exposed. So, wherever black it becomes white wherever white it becomes black that is the photograph ok. So, this is essentially contact printing the word has been taken from photography contact prints you go and ask is ke char contact print chahiye? exactly like this. So, the emulsion side is on the side of this resist so it touches and that is one problem I last time said 
that if keep every now and then if you touch the mask to resist your different wafers uh, because the mask is costly. So you keep doing after some time the resist uh, I mean the resist mitt attached to the mask or mask emulsion may go and therefore it cannot be used after few amount numbers of lithographies which cost goes to you. Then why this is so important? Yeah it is, it is still used once a while. Since this does not have any great uh, attachments actually you have a optical system which is uh, sometime multiple convex with uh, convex or convex lens for focusing properly or concave convex lens or plano convex. There are different kinds of lenses which focuses the beams or by focus beam comes to the parallel ok. So adjust focal lengths. This is relatively cheaper 300 to 4,000, 400,000 dollars which people think cheap ok. Total salary may is itne tis saal mein nahi hoi hogi itne. Whenever I listen 1.76 lakh crore loss, I just count the number, I can't count kya hota hai ye number. Is that ok? So what is contact print? The mask is touching the wafer or the resist ok. Then you shine the light, it, it will give very good result, we will show you later because whatever age you are saying light possibly can go there easily ok. So it may be one of the best lithography possible but it has its own problems. Is it ok? As mask is contact with resist, it is called uh, uh, you know you can see since this ages uh, it is a very sharp image can be transferred. However, the it is a very high resolution uh, resist uh, process actually, sharp, mostly sharp. However, as I keep touching the mask will go bad as well as vapor may go bad ok. Resist may be not straight all the time every area. In some areas resist thickness and mask thickness may not be touching so it may have another problem create. So contact printing is better only when the patterns are large then it is 100 percent transfers no errors. Smaller patterns do not try contacts, we will show you what we will do then ok. See second possibility is uh, separate the mask from wafer or resist ok by some small amount this is called gap distance. It may be 50 microns, it can be 25 microns, it can be even 100 microns in some proximity aligners ok but 100 is normally not favored typically it is 25 to 50 micron separation between the mass plate and the resist well. So this is gap between resist and the mass plate. Uh, again it only can do large uh, features can be done through this kind of uh, this. I will show you what numbers one get actual values. It has a relatively poor resolutions ok and the cost is slightly more it is 1000 kilo ok 400 say 1000 ho gaya okay. that is 1 million 1 million dollars ok ka hai ek uh, normal proximity printer. In our lab if you have a MJB some old SUS kind of companies aligner in those days it used to cost 4 lakhs of rupees. Now such mass aligners are not even available ok. But that time my patterns were 5 microns. So it was perfect everything went well ok. Both, both places some resist may stick to the mask some so since its densities are different the refract index are different. So the next time when you use it will create a problem. Secondly if I remove the resist for some part the exposure thickness will be varying. So it may spoil the image the present one and it will spoil the image for the second one ok. Is that clear? So avoid it if possible touching be avoided. The problem is if it exactly sits like this it does not happen so much both are dried and everything. But as I told you what will happen it slide on that that may be 2 micron slide but it will remove that much area from there at times ok and that is where the problem starts ok. 
बट वन कैन सी इफ इट इज अ लार्ज एरिया ठीक है यार सब कुछ उसका वो भी थिक रहता है एवरीथिंग इज थिक देयर सो ऑल ऑल आर फाइन ओके सो दिस इज कॉल्ड प्रॉक्सिमिटी अलाइनर्स एंड दीज आर वेरी ऑफ कोर्स वेरी फ्यू प्लेसेस इज स्टिल यूज लाइक यू आर यूजिंग एच ई एम टीज और यू आर यूर द नंबर ऑफ ट्रांजिस्टर्स आर टेन ट्वेंटी वहाँ ठीक है ये सब अच्छा है वी आर लुकिंग फॉर एन आई सी विच हैज मिलियन और बिलियन ट्रांजिस्टर्स सच प्रोसेस विल नेवर बी यूज so why are there no there are certain people who are still working on different things and buying a huge cost of a projection printer which will show you which may be around 10 million to 20 millions is worthless because you are not even doing 10 wafers in next one year so putting so much money is best okay so buy a cheaper one play some games look for results okay and then you are publishing so a one bit theek hai but in industry its numbers So there, you need to have a proximity alignment. Okay, so the last and the not uh, the one which is mostly used. Uh, actually, the proximity printers can do as much as one microns, one to five microns. Okay, but below one micron certainly is not possible. Accurately, I mean, you put it, something will happen, and there are games of retrieving as well. Maybe some other day. When you know it's something called necessity is mother of inventions. In my time, many things were not available, but we still did it. Okay. Like when I first time did my PhD, when during my there was no matrix inversion program in any of the libraries of computers which we have. We are 1620 first IBM computers. So I wrote my matrix inversion myself. Okay. I learned a lot when how to write a program for such a large arrays. The problem came that the memory of those systems used to be 32k usable memory. That 32k, sum k, kitna bada lagta hai, mega, giga, or ye k. So no arrays can be put there. So you think, ek scan karo, usko release kar do. Jab fir se use karna hai, fir se uski value lo. So you keep doing that job n times, but don't store. Okay. अब फिर भी हमने किया ना सॉल्व किया ना सो इट इज नॉट दैट वी कुड सॉल्व ए मैट्रिक्स द सिस्टम डेंट अलाउ अस सो ये व्हेन यू थिंक दैट कैन बी डन प्रॉब्ली यू आर इंजीनियर टी प्लेस सो डोंट थिंक दैट अर्लियर टाइम वी कुड नेवर डू एनीथिंग वी स्टिल कुड डू बेटर एज गुड इन दोज डेज पॉसिबल द कॉस्ट मनी वॉज वेरी क्रूशल फॉर अस Uh, a proximity aligner has a uh, typically image reduction system which is 4 to 5x initial pattern which can be reduced to 1x it has two optical uh, areas one is essentially the collimator and then there is a mask and then through another uh, optical uh, collimating system it is focused on the silicon wafer okay so mask is far away from the wafer actually mask is far away from the wafer it's a very fantastic it seems to be otherwise but it is very high resolution process it creates very very low defect densities because it doesn't touch anything anywhere okay the only problem it gives is its number of wafers per hour are fewer compared to contact prints are fastest thak 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 a process line par hai If you see a conveyor belt, there are exposure systems. The wafer comes tack, wafer next, next tack, it keeps moving. Okay, this is not possible in proximate uh, this projection aligners. Actually, you have they do some four or five at a time, but that's that. Okay. So this is uh, throughput could be as low as 25 to 50 wafers an hour, whereas uh, contact printers can give you 2,000 wafers in a day. so that's the cost okay. but at the cost is resolutions this machine is typically 10 millions and this price is of 2002 okay. so now with all uh, inflation and everything the why the cost will not be lower because not that many foundries are buying them very few people are buying it 
So even more cost becomes more and more if the one foundry closes the next person has to pay more money because he has invested so he will charge the second vendor even more okay. So that is the game. So actually prices never go down in case of uh, any of this semiconductor systems because more and more companies are folding so those who are sticking has to pay more so I have invested. Okay. So this is a interesting uh, projection printing. Now all is fine if the dimensions of the mask uh, uh, patterns which you are looking is smaller or uh, larger up to 0.13 microns all everything looks so fine. One can say something which is now I will come back to and which is most important part for our lithography. Uh, some optics because everywhere we are showing you optics. So what is the optics playing part in this whole game? Yeah, this figure is available in this, these are the features, high resolution, low defect density, low throughput, higher cost. Okay. Uh, now these issues are very crucial for us, if the dimensions of the object and apertures are large, we can always use what is called as geometric optics or the ray, wave, ray nature of light, it is ray travels. However, if the aperture is small and the light be, then at the edges of the apertures light beam diffracts and this diffraction mechanism can be explained by saying that the light beam has wave nature. Okay. It is not the photon beam but it is it has a wave kind of structure. Uh, what is this law called? De Broglie's law. Okay, every matter can be thought of as waves. Okay. So what is the uh, why de Broglie uh, was also famous, firstly he was count that means he was a pre, one of the king's family in France in those days. Actually there were seven de Broglie, three won the Nobel Prize. Okay. Of course because they were counts so no one could refuse them. Okay. Of course they did great. Uh, so this de Broglie's PhD thesis that the waves are uh, matter is matter can be explained as waves actually has only one line in his PhD thesis and he was awarded doctorate. Abhi aisa nahi ho sakta hai. Abhi hum bolenge 130 banne chahiye. Literature survey 30 banna chahiye. Aapka chahiye conclusion chahiye. Ek line mein usko PhD mil gaye. Okay, so we need we have to leave geometric optics and we actually go to wave optics. Uh, just for those, of course this is also given in the book, just for that uh, all the point sources actually em emits the EM waves okay. and this is the uh, direction of propagation. So it is electric vector and this vector is normal to the propagation E H and then third Z is the propagation. So thoda EM waves padho, theory is same, wave theory. So if, if the propagation is this, these overlapping waves around are called wavelets or final wavelets. Okay. These travel and actually hit the object okay. and depend if there are also small objects there, it, they also form similar wavelets around those object points and this is my image and since if they are very close to each other there is a overlapping wavelet patterns. So you actually see a full pattern. So whole of the object is seen as one unit if this point are very close to each other and there is overlapping eigenfunctions. Okay. This is wave theory. So if that happens you see this image. However, if this object is not the kind shown here but has a slit which is called which has an aperture. So this is small aperture. Then when the wavelets travel here as in this, the center ones of course may go straight because they are unhindered but the edges do get some kind of edge effects okay. and that is essentially word used is diffraction. Okay. So now the wavelets travel upwards, this wavelet travels downwards. So the image has right now because of the aperture 
this object is only now restricted to this and is not same as what you thought. Okay. So, a diffraction pattern actually modifies your object, image of the object and that happens because of the wavelets trans going from aperture to the image plane. Okay. What is image plane in our case in proximity uh, this, uh, this resist where the light is actually coming. So, that is the resist plane. Okay. What is object? The mask, the mask which you have dark and white portion is the plane, these are slits for us. Two separated dark portions by a clear portion acts like a apertures. So, light is passing through a mask, through there are apertures. If they are closed, why will they close? Because as your nodes going to 10 nanometers down, you are looking for smaller and smaller gaps and therefore smaller apertures and smaller apertures will lead to diffractions okay. and this is provable by Fresnel laws. Okay. Yes. Oh yeah, the, the typical source if it is distributed, if it is the point source I may show you something but then I will, I okay, I will show you a point source system. This is only a source which is like a uh, UV light. I have a lamp which shines everywhere. Okay, so I everywhere I shine. But in real life, I may focus that. Okay, and here is what you are asking. Okay. That was only to show you the diffract. Why it diffracts? Okay, that is the wave theory. Okay, this is our system. This is our pro uh, uh, projection printing. A projection mask aligner. You have a point source, and the first thing it passes through is collimator, okay, which is essentially a convex lens. The distance is so adjusted focal length so that it becomes parallel beams. Here is your mask, which is having a slots, which is apertures. Is that okay? Black portion and clear portion. Again black portion, so open space in between clear areas, these are like a disc, circular disc. Okay. Now this aperture, as I just now said, whenever the beams come here, the center ones may straight go, but the edge ones may diffract. Now the problem is I may refocus them for the image. The problem starts something like this, depending on the actual apertures, part of the beam may actually be outside the next focusing system. So this essentially is the last information. Information was coming from this source to this, but it has gone outside the range of the next focusing system. So this much information typically one can say it is a high frequency information is lost and uh, only what is the information available which is impinging on the lens. Okay. So now this of course I should have shown this also. So once you see a lens system it focuses down again. Okay. Now this lens has a uh, what is we call as uh, diameter, how, I, how the lenses are made? Lenses are made out of a spheres of any material, glass or anything and then they are cut into some shapes. Okay. So curves are created out of that. So a, because you know it is spherical, so it gives you some kind of convex or concave shapes. Okay. So whatever is the, uh, this ball you use and you cut, that diameter of that sphere is essentially diameter of the lens. Okay. So this is the dia of the lens. Okay. Now this is the distance f focal points and you see because of the diffraction all of them are not focusing at the midpoint okay. and there is a information which is slightly in a spaced area and of course you can now see it roughly reflects whatever is your aperture, it comes down by adjusting F and D, probably you may get almost similar patterns seen, aperture patterns seen at the image plane. Is that clear? 
what is the game we are looking for? I want an AV image should be as same as mask image. So, I can create by choice of proper lens system which will create this size is roughly same as this size and that is what and the way masks are this is mask. So, mask is not touching to the wafer or silic uh, resist and still able to project the image which you actually wants to ok. So, this is essentially called projection alignment system ok. Now, that is lost, what is lost is cannot be gained ok. Yeah, there is a uh, there is a lack of some information, but as I said, normally uh, the you can see from here this intensity pattern at higher frequency is much lower intensity. So it's not that you really lose all of it. Ninety percent is anyway covered through lens system. If you really want to increase the dye and cost of lens goes by the diameter you have. Okay, so itna bada lens lagaoge to sab kuch ho jayega. Okay, but then there is a money involved. It has been found that the uh, image intensity II at this plane is essentially forms the solution of wave equation is in the Bessel form, Bessel function form and this is how the Bessel function looks. These are called first minima. this is the maxima, these are called first minima here and here. This is the intensity pattern along x axis. So, one can see this first minima or this is called central maximum. By Rayleigh's theory, one can see that this essentially is 1.22 lambda f by d. This is derived from Bessel function through Rayleigh's formula. Okay. So, if you see the radius, that is the maximum available intensity only at the maximum uh, at this point, then this radius is essentially this minima to minima. How sharp it is! What is the what are we really looking for? All intensity sharply available to you, maximum intensity. So, if this is smaller, it is even better. Okay. So, we find the radius of central maximum is 1.22 lambda f by d, where d is the diameter of the lens, f is the focal length, lambda is the wavelength of the light used, and okay. Now, if you really want the image to be point image very sharp point image to be created that means this should be 0. You know smaller the radius means sharper the image. So, if I want a very sharp image what should I do? Lambda be 0, focal length be 0 and the diameter of lens is infinite. Yeah, it is the ideal system which never can be done. So, obviously the radius cannot be point so point image. It will always be slightly larger than that because lambda is finite, focal length is finite and the dia is also finite. Beam which actually I can create. Okay. This is image available to you, uh, energy available to you for exposures. Okay. So, I I essentially is decided by how much is F, how much is D and what is the wavelength of the light used and it gives a Bessel functions. I okay. will read it further, if not I will give a paper where more details are available. Now, this ideal point our image cannot be created. So, how best is what I have shown you, keep finite everything and image will be slightly diffracted. All that I am now seeing, if this can be almost equal to the aperture, I have solved my problem. What are the advantages? Achha, there are also two uh, uh, diffraction patterns or diffraction laws. One is called Fresnel laws. If the image plane is very close to the lens system, then it, is, it follows what is called Fresnel laws. And if it is a far field, you are far away, your image plane is at infinite or very far, then the image transfers are essentially due to the effect called Fresnel uh, images. Optics panna hai to kisi aur ek din, pura optics. Okay. So, since in projection alignment the distance of image to this is far little larger than proximity is the minimum, contact is 0. Okay. Here the image plane is away, so we say it is Fraunhofer case. It has a resolution 
uh, performance has following things we look for any mask printing. How good is the resolution? Then the word which we want to explain quickly is depth of focus. This kind of example batayenge. Field of view, MTF, alignment accuracy and throughput. These are the features we are looking for lithography expertise. Okay. Of course, this image and now I will show you what is each term I am talking about. Uh, the word depth of focus is something like this. Uh, why we are interested in the word depth of focus? Anyone? No, it is not true. I mean you are saying it is not wrong, but the problem is essentially this. The resist on a wafer does not have uniform thickness. Is that correct? So some images away from the resist, some images closer to resist. But at the image plane, both should come same place. Okay. Let us look for something more about quickly. Uh, we have an image, we have a figure which I am going to show you. Uh, there are two problems. One is of course the depth of focus, other is two point sources and how do they transform there on through a lens system. Ek object ka point here is ke niche hai, to ye example hai. Uska thoda definition ke liye ho chahiye mujhe. Oh. I repeat this is given in Plummer's book. Okay. Not exactly in the order, not exactly the way I explain or not exactly the way I write, but in general whatever I am teaching for last 2-3 days is some way or the other or maybe identical in some cases because I have read it. Since I have read it some of my words may be coming from them. Okay, so this uh, just to give it D is the diameter of the lens and uh, we are interested to see uh, what is word we are going to see now is the word numerical aperture. A lens ke system ke saath bahut common word aata hai. So let us say you have two point sources, uh, two point sources at A and B passing through a lens system and uh, they are uh, they are so this is the focal length so we what we see is let us say you start with b and it appears at b dash here so it goes through a angle alpha then it h uh, it focuses down to b the maximum angle up to which the point source can be accepted by the lens is called numerical aperture is that clear the maximum angle or maximum this hypotenuse value to this value ratio distance to this height this is sin theta okay how much is this sin alpha essentially gives you numerical aperture kitna jyada ho sakta hai jyada se jyada 90 karenge to wo bahut bada ho jayega lens itna bada ho jayega 60 degree, 45 degree is what possibly is easier to attain the alpha angles and this alpha is also half. So actually it is half alpha, in fact I should, I have shown you alpha but many books show actually this as total alpha, okay, this and this because this is D but I have, I have done slightly different as he also, he uses D by 2. If you use D, then the alpha should be used as 2 alpha, but since he uses uh, D by 2, so it is only this as defined as alpha. So some books if you see old ones or some paper, they show you this alpha. This is exactly what is really aperture. How much is the total beam edges to edges lens can see? Is that angle is called numerical aperture. But the definition we there we say okay use instead of D, use d by 2. So it is similar and therefore need not worry the numbers may come same. Okay. okay, so this the if you have two such point sources reflected this, it has some small angle, though both will pass through an angle alpha, even this angle is also alpha. Okay. I should have shown you the center line also. Okay. So this also is alpha. So what we are now saying that to resolve to what is our object? 
there are two point that is two areas of the mass I want to separate how quick two lines I can separate that is my resolution okay that is my resolution. So these are the two such point sources and I say I want to see how, how whether they resolve at the other end. Now for each of them what is the pattern intensity pattern will be Bessel function. So this is one Bessel function for A and this is another Bessel function for B. Okay. What Rayleigh says and that is most important it is called Rayleigh's criteria the resolution between these two maxima which is the R value which is gives will be such that the central maxima are separated by R if the first minima of the one matches with sec maximum of the second. If that happens you have the resolutions. If anything otherwise they will come closer and then you will not be able to resolve. So the one of the minimas should match with the maximum minimum of first maxima should match with the uh, minimum should match with the maximum of the first. Is that clear? This is Rayleigh's criteria. Okay. We also should realize that this right now we assume beams are in air. Air has a refract index of one. Let us say I put this system in water. Water has a refract index of 1.33. And let us put some immersion oil is which is what the new technology is, it has a 1.4 to 1.5 refractive indexes okay. 1.4 is most likely but there are new oils have come which has 1.48 or 1.5 kind of refractive index. So the numerical aperture is defined as the refractive index multiplied by sin alpha, n sin alpha is defined as in Physics what we are saying the maximum amount of angle through which the lens can receive from any source is its numerical aperture. Is that clear? Kitna asakta hai. That is his aperture. Okay. So is that clear definition? And this R, we want to find R now. Why all this maths? Because I want to relate numerical aperture with the D as well as R. R is my ultimate. I want to separate two lines, how closer I can come? What is lithography expertise? Can I separate 10 nanometer lines? Can I separate 50 nanometer lines? So I want to see what is the resolution I get from this so called projection alignment system. Okay. And no better system we know, so this is the system we will use. Okay. Now if you look at the geometry, maybe is okay this is d by 2 this is sin alpha so d by 2 by f you look at this side this is f this is d by 2 this is alpha so d by 2 by f is sin alpha is that okay perpendicular divided by base is sin so d by 2 divided by f is sin alpha so d is 2 f sin alpha However, in this assumption was the air was the where where was ray was going, I mean wavelets were were going in the air. If you now substitute R, what was R we figured out from the airy pattern? 1.22 lambda f by d. That is the function we got. Is that okay? If we got this function, replace d here by 2f sin lambda. And if we include the refractive index in this, then it will be uh, instead of f, it will be nf sin alpha. So 0 0.61 lambda over n sin alpha, but n sin alpha is numerical aperture. So it is 0 0.61 lambda by numerical aperture. That is the resolution. Is that clear? So how to improve the resolution? R resolution means R should be smaller. I want to resolve as close as possible. Okay. So what should I increase? Okay. Na. So I must somehow increase the Na. So I must increase refract indexes. So that is why immersion word has come. I can change the refract index. Okay. If I change the alpha, which is possible, but then the lens dia will correspondingly increase so I cannot increase alpha too much okay. 
the other possibility is lambda b smaller that is what we are trying we are actually reducing the wavelength of the light from I, G line to I line to 193 okay, 4, 465 to 248 to 193 and we are fluoride is calcium fluoride is 157. Okay. So one of the why we are reducing is it now clear why wavelengths were going down because I want to improve R. So if I improve R, uh, improvement is smaller, smaller the two, two points can be separated. I must have lambda smaller. So I am trying very hard to get very low lambdas. Okay. I will improve my NA by just increasing the refractive index and that is why I will do what is called as immersion uh, lithography. This 0.61 is true for certain values. So we normally name it as uh, K1. It has also depending on the machine used and typical value is around 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. Now another term simultaneously appears, okay. the word I am now what is the second parameter first I said how much you can separate, the second was what I was saying Varagiri depth of focus because you know my resist is not uniform thickness everywhere so I want to see a depth of focus, is that okay, this is also given in Plummer's book. वो एक पूरा paragraph लिखने के बाद एक expression लिखता है मैं direct आपको मुंह से बोल रहा है expression लिख रहा है इतना ही फर्क है. Okay. Uh, okay, this is what I already have said. Now, if I increase any and my worries are and now I am proving that the depth of focus will go down. Okay, let's see what happens. Uh, depth of focus is you have a lens system and this is the delta is called depth of focus, two planes up to which image should be possible. Okay. Why it is should be like this because I want to see if the thickness of resist is here or here image should be same point. Okay. So I, I call that as depth of focus for the lens. Okay. So if I, this angle is theta let us say, I am sorry this is the external line not this, do not use this. So this goes to the uh, this, this is delta, this is the uh, focal length. So we see tan theta and this is d by 2, d by 2 by f plus lambda is tan theta, is that okay? This is geometry, d by 2 by f is, uh, f plus delta is tan theta and if theta is smaller that is f is long enough then f is much larger than delta which it will be depth of focus is much smaller compared to focal lengths okay so, same method microscope actually goes on same principle depth of focus you adjust it okay so theta tan theta is theta therefore theta is d upon 2f if f is much larger than delta then theta is roughly d upon 2f okay is that point clear? I did tan theta is this upon perpendicular upon divided by base, base is f plus delta sorry, f plus delta d by 2 upon f plus delta is d by 2, uh, d by 2 but this is tan theta, if theta is smaller, tan theta is theta, essentially how it is written tan theta is equal to sin theta if theta is smaller and sin theta is theta if theta is smaller, okay. you can keep series of expansions. So I get, now what is the difference between delta minus delta cos theta, what is delta cos theta, remember this is delta, so I am looking for this, okay. so delta minus delta cos theta by optics law must be proportional to lambda by 4. Okay. Please remember what I am talking, this is my delta and this is delta, yeah this is delta divided by minus delta cos theta. Are baba ye, ye jo theta yahan par hi hai re, ye theta hi hai, ye, ye delta hai aur ye kitna hoga? 
Ah, sorry, sorry. I, I, I am sorry. I, I am only saying the same. So the separation between these two, delta cos theta minus delta, is essentially always lambda by four by optics. Okay. So lambda by four is delta minus one cos theta, and if I expand everything again, this you can. This probably is not given in the way I have done, but may be given. So I can prove that I can write sin square theta is 1 minus cos square theta, cos theta is under root of 1 minus sin square theta, binomially expansion if sin theta is smaller. So it is half sin, sin square theta. After all this, delta is lambda upon 2 theta square, okay, simple maths. Or delta is lambda by 2 and theta square is 1 upon d square by f square. Theta just now I found. So theta is d by f, so d square by f square. So this is half lambda, but d by f is also numerical apertures, d by f. So it is numerical aperture square and this half is normally is a machine dependent many times. So it is given a name k2 which is 0.5 or, or close to that. So if I want larger depth of focus, what should I do? from this expression, I want if even if there is a variation in resist thickness, I want focusing be done, is that clear to you? So I want depth of focus be larger, what should I do from the expression? Lambda be larger and Na be smaller, what was the condition for resolution? lambda be smaller and Na be larger and now we are asking just the opposite. Okay. So which means some trade off is essential, either you will get greater resolutions or greater depth of focus, okay. both cannot be simultaneously achieved, is that clear? So you cannot say I will have a variation in resist of 0.5 microns and will also have a resolution of 0.5 say 10 nanometer, that is not possible in any case, is that clear to you? So I, either you can adjust higher depth of focus systems, if your lithography is so bad, you look for delta larger then you will have a worse resolutions, is that clear or vice versa, okay. this is what our ultimate. Yeah, but that is pixel based, if it is CCD based, otherwise, okay, last few, just a minute, I know you are tired. The, the problem which, uh, there are few more problems which you can read in this, one of them is called uh, MTF, I will maybe quickly, few two slides maybe is enough for you. Typical intensity pattern for the two areas may be like this. But in real life when it goes through a mask in uh, this projection printing, actually you get something like this, okay. This is called I minimum and this is called I maximum. And we define a term modulation transfer function as I max minus I min divided by I max minus I min and if I plot MTF versus dimensions, this is 1.0, oh sorry, oh, one ho jayega phir. Okay. always one ho jayega. What is it trying to show you? That if your dimensions are larger, this is I max to I min, this is a, one can see what I am plotting. For a larger dimensions separation that is larger dimension of the patterns, MTF can always be achieved 1, I minimum can go as low as 0, okay. Sh image can go all the way down, I mean light can go all the way down. However, if it is very close and there is a diffraction going on, this I minimum may not be 0, but I minimum may be higher. Since the thickness of resist is higher, I max may not be this, so it may be something like this, in which case MTF will become smaller, okay. 
which means that means the actual intensities are not passing as I reduce dimensions. Is that clear? So, as I scale down the technology, one of the problem I see is that the actual available intensity for exposure starts reducing. Is that clear? Because of this MTF factors. Okay. The last but not the least, some figures I may show you, the rest you can read from the book. Uh, yesterday I did say uh, there is something called optical proximity corrections. Let us say this is my actual image, okay. this is my actual image and I do optical proximity corrections and I get this image. But when I print, if I use this without OPC, I get this mashed up image and if I use OPC corrected mask, then I get little better than this. What is OPC? It is a software program which actually do image processing. Okay. It is a software program which does image processing. It sees that given that this, if I transfer the image on a resist, what do I get? If I modify that initial image itself, mask image, then I may get little different outputs. This is called optical proximity corrections. These are possible. Okay. Is that clear? So, by lithography prior to exposures, by uh, prior to mask, you have to actually do some kind of proximity corrections. So, you create the actual mask, which uh, the mask which you really want from the layout designers, you actually modify it. Okay. This only can be done if you roughly know from image processing how does it transfer in real life and then start correcting so that better image is then transferred on the resist. This is called OPC techniques. Okay. Yes, it is preparation of mask. Okay. If you have a laser, uh, you can remove some part of the resist, it is called scrolls, but that is not every, it is very costly system. Last sheet on this. There is something very interesting thing happen since it is a wavelet on a smaller dimensions. This is your mask, and this is the in electric field or amplitude of the light as per the mask. Okay. This electric field at the mask and electric field at the wafers, and wafers will be airy patterns. So, this is some kind of this patterns I get. And I know the intensity is proportion to electric field square. So, actually I get this. So, what is the resolution between these two? The merging has happened. Okay. So, what I do is when I reduce dimension, the second part of this I have a some material I put which gives me 180 degree out of phase. This is called grating optics. We actually coat some material on the other side which gives you 180 degree out of phase. So, the electric field at the mask is something like this. Electric field means electric field vector for EM waves, do not think I have bias it. Okay. So, the E for this and this is this, but since it is a square, the two separated intensity patterns can be get. This is called phase shifting lithography. Okay. So, if a smaller dimension comes, do phase shifting, do OPC do projection alignments, adjust the numerical apertures, you do uh, immersion lithography and you will be able to get far better patterns on paper. Okay. Is that clear? photo How to improve numerical aperture? That is what I said this angle was the limiting factor. So, I put a liquid somewhere here. Okay. This is called immersion this okay. and generally best, best liquid is what? Water. So, most immersion technologies use water as the liquids. Iske karan theta badaya ja sakta hai or therefore numerical aperture badaya ja sakta hai. So, this is one technique of improving numerical apertures. Before we quit, this is the last item on this show. This is what we are looking for now. 
This is called extreme ultraviolet lithography technique. You have a carbon dioxide laser through a lot of collecting system and focusing system. Uh, we pass the beam. This is a plasma chamber. So we actually convert this gas laser beam and up put into plasma. Now this plasma beams actually are absorbed even here, but we want larger intensity. So I do not want any absorption, but 30 percent will still absorb here. Then I have mirrors. I do not use lenses. Lenses will absorb much more. So I use number of mirrors. Even mirror absorb some energies. And you deflect the beam and put it on the wafer. Okay. This deflecting system using mirrors which are controlled by motors is very costly and very accurate. You want a order of nanometers okay, movements, okay, so very difficult. The lambda which you get from this is 13.5 nanometers. Please remember the numbers. If I use extreme lithography, the lambda which I can get is 193, 158. And what number now I am talking? 13 nanometers. So, even 5 nanometer technology is doable if I can achieve extreme UV system. Okay. It is very expensive. Right now, it is in billion dollar system going on, and no one has a full success. Okay. However, this is what the ultimate will be in the lithography. You will have a deep uh, extreme UV system, very costly system may have a smaller throughputs, but may give you features of as low as less than 5 nanometers because its, its wavelength is just 13 nanometers. This is something what ultimately every company is dreaming okay. so that zero dimension FETs could be created okay, <laughs> at the end of the day. Thank you for today uh, for patience. Uh, so next uh, Wednesday we will start with implants.